All right, so let's try this again with sound. So uh, just reviewing the first part of the lab where you guys were just looking at the electric field. So this is what the electric field should have looked like um, based on the simulation. We see electric fields going out of the positive charges and into the negative charges. We see uh, these fields are kind of pushing against each other between these charges, and then these fields are kind of going together in the positive and the negative. Where is the field the largest? Um, I said it's this yellow dot here, somewhere around this region, right? So it's going to be the biggest charge and the closest we can get to that. The yellow um, sensors are things that can tell you the electric field, and electric field can also be measured in volts per uh, meter. And so that's what this value is giving us. Where's the electric field zero? Well, that would be in between here. It's going to be closer to this smaller charge than the bigger charge based on the charge difference. Um, and so this isn't exactly zero, but 0 0.42. So this is the region where my electric field would be zero right in there, that middle dot. And then describe what would happen to the electron placed at location in no number two. Uh, the location basically where the electron would not move. That's because if the electric field is zero, then the net force on it is also going to be zero. It's not only going to be attracted to the positive charges here, but also here. Um, so the object itself would experience zero force. What would happen to an electron place in the location shown below? So if we had an electron here, well now there is an electric field there, right? So we have an electric field pointing to the right. And remember that the electric field points in the direction opposite of the force on electron because it points in the direction of the force on a proton, right? So what I said is based on the first image uh, with the electric field pointing to the right, electric field points in the direction of the force on a positive charge. So the electron would experience an acceleration to the left because it would have a net force to the left. If it was free to move, then it would move to the left and it would be accelerating, it would be speeding up. What about if it was the opposite in a proton? So I said the net force would be to the right. Uh, it would follow the direction of the electric field and so it would accelerate to the right. However, it would accelerate with a lesser acceleration due to the fact that it has an equal size force but its mass is much, much larger. So because the charges are equivalent, right? One's a positive, one's a negative, 1 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. However, because this is such a bigger mass, it has same force, bigger mass, smaller acceleration. Sorry for the background noise. People are working in the room. So the what you're gonna do then for, oh my gosh, for the rest of the lab is, um, you're going to start looking at something called equal potential. So, sorry, I had this up when I did it before, but it's not up now, obviously, because I didn't plan ahead when you do it twice. Um, you're gonna create a field that looks something like this, and you're gonna plot the equal potentials. So you can do that using this equal potential plotter. Um, I'm going to find zero here. And I'm going to plot it. It can be plus or minus 0.5, but that's my zero. And I'm going to show my values, right? And then I could go over here. Like if I was doing every five volts, I could get to here. That's close enough. And I would plot it, right? If I was going to go to 10 volts, I'd go on this side just because uh, you'll notice the, so the writing doesn't overlap. So I can kind of keep track of what's what. And I'll plot it close enough, right? So I can start to plot things like that. I can move them around. I would plot on this side as well in 10 volt increments. Right, so it's gonna look something like that. Um, are the equal lines evenly spaced? What does this suggest in terms of the relationship of uh, equal potential and the equation of what it actually is? Uh, then you're going to try to set up something that looks like this. So doing that, you know, I would have, mine's going to be opposite, right? But it would look something like this where I'm setting up positive charges. This side I would set up negative charges like so. And then again, I'm going to try to plot equal potentials. So I'm going to go to maybe where my zero point is and I'm going to plot based on what it asked me to do, okay? So it asked me to plot 10 volt increments, negative 70 to 70. We don't have to go crazy, but... Plot those. Um, and then it just asks you questions regarding these two charges, 
okay, and what's actually going to be happening. Use a few more of the charges than what I use in creating your, your uh, graph. So use more than this, but I'm um, giving you an idea of what it should look like, okay? It's then going to be tough to do this. You can try it. I'm not saying spend a lot of time, but don't worry about this yet. Um, you're going to have to watch a lecture on equal potential to understand how to work through this. Okay, uh, so watch that lecture first before, and then you can come back to this. You could do this, though, in terms of what would a, the simulation look like for this. Um, again, once you get to the math, it's going to be challenging. So don't worry about doing the math right here. It asks you to do some math. Don't worry about that. Um, but what you can do is you can just do the graphing parts and kind of look at what would be happening based on the equal potentials, okay? Uh, so that's a quick rundown. Hopefully that makes sense. Let me know if you have any questions. Again, don't do the math at first. You're going to have to watch a lecture before you will be able to do any of that math.